I've been thinking about exactly what you need to know if you're going to become a UX designer in 2024. This was actually kind of tricky because I think that the approach that you should take to becoming a UX designer now is different from years prior. So I'm going to tell you exactly what those things are and give you a good roadmap for the kinds of skills that you should learn and the approach that you should take to eventually getting your first full-time job. We're gonna start now with what I think is the most important thing for you to know. And that is in 2024, the UX dream is more difficult than it used to be, but it is still completely possible. So this year we're in weird times. There's a lot of tech layoffs going on. The job market is not so great. That means now when a job is posted in UX, they're getting hundreds of applications to that job. And many of those people are very well qualified. They have experience, they have a great portfolio. So it is now harder for a junior designer to stand out if they're just gonna send in an application. Um, it's always been hard for a junior designer to stand out in this way, but especially more so in this year. So that means a, a couple of things. I think if a junior designer is going to be successful now, they have to either have a higher level of skill than they would in years prior, or they're gonna to have to find some other way of getting experience beyond just doing this, the typical nine to five job. The good news is that both of these things are completely within your control. You can get to the point now where your portfolio of work is so good just by working harder than many of the other designers out there. You can constantly be watching different tutorials and reading information online so that you can get your work and your ability to talk about UX to the point that stands out so much that when you apply to a job, they pretty much have no choice but to give you a job interview. And then on the experience side, there are many different ways of getting UX experience beyond just having your standard full-time job. You could do things like volunteer, do freelance projects, find someone who's starting an app and do UX work for them. Later in the video, I'm gonna get into the best way to do this, but right now, main point that I want you to take away here is that if you just really sprint at this for a full year, you learn everything you can about UX, you do as many different real world projects as you can during that year, and then you apply to jobs later, I think you're gonna really stand out at that point. And it could even be at the, the point where the job market has really recovered. And then with all that work you're, you've done, you are in the perfect position to then get your first full-time job. Now, the second thing that I think you need to know is in 2024, there are more options than ever for learning UX design. So to give you some brief history, Back when UX was still a pretty new field, it was very difficult to become a UX designer unless you had a bachelor's or master's degree in design, or you switched over to UX design from some sort of adjacent field in tech, like web development. And then later on in 2017, 2018, UX bootcamps started becoming popular. So these are a usually about a three month program where you spend about $15,000 to go there pretty much full time to learn all of the fundamental skills of UX design. But there are some obvious flaws with that. Not everyone can pay that much money to do a boot camp, and not everyone just has three months that they can put into a program like that. So many designers would opt to go with self taught learning, where they usually learn as much as possible from books or different resources online and then get into the field that way. Now, I would say up until very recently, this was a pretty difficult way to go. But within the past year or two, I think that the online learning in UX has gotten so good that there, there probably isn't that much of a difference between becoming a self-taught designer or someone who goes to a boot camp. I think that it's even possible that the self-taught designer is gonna learn more practical information by say watching youtube videos or watching courses that are relatively inexpensive this is definitely not to say that boot camps are bad i went to a boot camp and had a great experience doing that but another thing that's becoming popular now 
is part-time online boot camps that cost a, a fraction of the price of a traditional boot camp. So now you can have the, the structured learning, doing these online classes, and have a community of people around the world who are also taking one of these boot camps. Now, I haven't actually taken one of these, so I can't provide a real recommendation to you. Um, I have been hearing about one called Memorizely. That seems pretty good, so that might be worth checking out. But main point here is that if you're looking to get into UX design, you have options for how you can actually learn these skills. I think you should evaluate what the budget that you want to spend on learning is and um, decide which one is right for you from there. But with all of the main ways of learning UX, I don't think there's necessarily a very bad option. I think that there, there's many good ways of actually learning UX in 2024. Now, the third thing that I think you need to know is there are three main categories of skills that you're going to need to become proficient in in order to be a successful designer. So the first thing is the standard UX processes. Now, what these are, are essentially the, the steps that you would take to doing UX design and creating a good user experience. So at each company, um, they have a different way of, of doing the whole process, but typically what you can consider as like the standard steps in a UX process would be doing user research, making user personas, making user journeys and scenarios, doing information architecture, wireframing and prototyping, usability testing, and iterative design. Now, you don't need to be a master in each of these things, but what I would encourage you to do is do your research on what each of these things are so you have a good understanding of each part of this, uh, this whole process so that you have the basics down and you can at least do, do each of these things in some capacity if you are called on to do so. It's pretty rare that a company is going to be able to do all seven of these things every time they're doing a UX project, but most of the time they're going to be doing at least some of these things to create the best user experience that they can. Now, the second category of skill that you're gonna to need to become good at is UI design. This is short for user interface design. Essentially what it is, is designing all of the visual aspects that you see on a screen. So think when you open an app and you see all the colors, buttons, icons, the whole layout of the screen, that is essentially UI design. UI design and UX design are very closely tied together. So most of the time, you are going to be doing both UI and UX in the same role. Most of the time when you see a job posted, it's gonna be under what they call a UI UX designer or a product designer, which is mostly the same thing as UI UX designer. Sometimes you'll see separate UX and UI design roles, but that's pretty rare and usually they're at, they're at some of the biggest companies. Now, my controversial opinion is I actually think it's most important to develop your UI skills early on in your career. And I have a couple of reasons for that. The first is usually when a junior designer is gonna be hired for their first job, they're gonna be doing more UI design than UX design. A lot of companies are not gonna want the junior designers to do, be doing these big important parts of the UX process. And most of the time, the user experience of a product is going to be defined for them. And they're not gonna really be figuring that kind of thing out on their own, maybe like the, some smaller parts of it. So doing good UI design is one of the biggest ways that a new designer can stand out when they first get a job. Now, the other reason that, that it's really important is because I would say that good UI design is the number one way that you can get your portfolio to stand out when so someone is reviewing it and deciding if they're going to bring you in for a job interview. Most of the time when someone's reviewing UX portfolios, they don't really have a lot of time to go through the whole thing and read the whole UX process that you did in the project that you're presenting. So they're going to make their decision on whether this is a good portfolio or not, more often than not by what they see on the screens that you're showing. And that is all pretty much UI design. You definitely don't have to become a UI design master, but I would say you just have to get to the point 
where your designs look like they're on the same level as other popular products that you would see on the market. I think if you get to that point and you look like your designs can go into production at the company that you're interested in working at, then you are definitely good to go and you're, you've probably met that threshold. Now, the third category of skills to become proficient in is explaining your design decisions. So in order to become a successful designer, you are going to constantly have to explain the rationale behind all of your designs pretty much on a, a, a daily basis. Design is a very collaborative sort of process where you're going to have different stakeholders from other departments always looking at your designs and determining if they are right for the product. So you're going to have a lot of opinions going into this. So you're going to have to constantly explain why your designs do fit the, the needs of the company and why they are solving the problem that, that they are aiming to solve. So what I would recommend is as you're starting to learn UX design and you're doing different practice projects, start thinking about the why behind everything that you're doing. I would say that each design decision that you make should be tied back to the, the goals of the project and the original problem that you're aiming to solve. So if you can do that and you start developing that skill of explaining all of your design decisions, you're gonna have a major head start in getting into the industry. Now, the fourth thing that you need to know is starting as a freelance designer is definitely the easiest way to get experience early on. Since the bar is set so high right now for getting a full-time job, um, as I was mentioning earlier, you need to think of other ways to get around this to get your first, say, year or two of experience. Freelancing is the perfect way to do that because the requirements for getting a freelancing client are going to be much lower than what it would take to get that, that full-time job. And it offers you a way of making money as a UX designer um, to basically get by while you're acquiring all that experience. And it's giving you all of these different portfolio projects to talk about when you actually do go for that full-time job. You can also join a freelancing platform to make the whole process of finding clients much easier. For me personally, I used Upwork when I was first starting out and got my first year and a half of experience pretty much just working with clients on that platform. If you do decide to go with the freelancing route, you're gonna to have to treat freelancing as another skill set to develop. You're gonna to have to work on things like client outreach, selling yourself as the right person for a job, and managing clients. But I would say all these skills are completely learnable. Those are the main things that I had for you today. So to sum all this up, becoming a UX designer in 2024 is not easy, but if it's something that you've done your research on and it seems like a really interesting career to you, I would highly recommend going for it because I, I personally love being a UX designer and I would definitely recommend the job to someone else. So if you're really ready to hustle and make this happen, I would say you can absolutely do it. Thanks for watching. And if you are interested in learning more about UX, please consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to be coming out with new content very soon that is geared towards new UX designers and helping them to succeed. You can also pick up my free guide that I just made on writing perfect UX case studies, which is linked in the description. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.